that's where I said we need to have our foundation and our values aligned. And then, you know, we run a company of integrity or a life of integrity. And uh, the other stuff is just noise. And yes, sometimes it might hurt your marketing a little bit. But I think if you talk to anyone that I've worked with or I've coached them personally, I kept my word and I didn't give them unrealistic expectations. And I think at the end of the day, people appreciate that and they grow more. Um, if somebody's telling you to do all these dishonest things, do you really trust that person? Does that person really have your back? Is that person someone that you ne really need in your team or your corner? I don't think so. Right. So I kind of agree with you on some of the things that you said. And on, on the one hand and on the other hand, I kind of think like, I still think like, when people imitate, they're still learning. They are in that phase in their life when they are learning. They don't know who they are yet. And yeah. they do all these things because they want to succeed. And sometimes they feel there aren't any other options. So those were the only options that they could see at that point in their lives. So that's why that's the only thing that they were able to do. Uh, they're still ambitious. They're, they still they have goals and they want to reach those goals. It's just that that was the way that they were able to see. And they had nobody around them um, to tell them otherwise or to show them, hey, there's more to it or you can do this or you can do that. So I, can't, I don't have any negative um, <laughs> feelings, maybe. I don't have any negative feelings or any negative attitude towards people who are imitators or even people who lie because let's admit it I mean people lie all the time right <laughs> we do it sometimes too it's when it's done with like with like something that somebody want to hurt wants to hurt you and they lie to hurt you that's mm -hmm. where I have a problem but if only they lie because they want to achieve some goal and it doesn't really hurt anybody I don't really have any negative feelings or attitude towards that and the one that you mentioned is like like for example i've seen i've seen this a lot uh like we only have 50 of these so order quickly this is because you have to in marketing you have to create a sense of urgency and the truth is people go for that so if people go for that you know marketers will always be able to use that because sense of urgency like oh i have to get it now because I won't be able to get it later, right? It's the same things with discounts, with sales like Black Friday and like different holiday sales, for example. So people fall for that because I guess people want that or they want to believe in that. I don't see big harm done by that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Number one, I was giving you my story and uh, the two things happened. I was shocked when um, people were literally advising me, this is how you manipulate people. And you're right. It does create urgency. What I encourage people that I'm coaching is, can we figure out a way that's still honest to encourage this expectancy? For example, uh, when you say there's only 15 left, um, you could put a lower price and say, this is only good for 24 hours. You know, get your seat now. And I, I run Black Friday specials on my products. And it's legitimate. I said, this is good until midnight Sunday, and then I change the price back. So I do create an urgency with a lowered price, but you're exactly right. We all exaggerate. We all do things. But that's why I think we need mentors, because just picture this. Let's say you do exaggerate something because you want to get to the top. It's not going to hurt anyone, but then it gets exposed and you're ruined. And so those, it's always dicey when you are you know, not operating with integrity. And again, yes, we've all lied. I certainly have. But there are consequences sometimes, and you do run the risk of destroying your company. Now, keep in mind, I was a federal probation and a state probation and a cop. I saw so many people, it started small and it grew, and the next thing you know, they're going to prison. Um, I had, I will not give specifics, but I worked a case with a doctor who came out with a weight loss product and skipped the FDA, started selling the product on the black market. Uh, the product had some benefits, but there were some health risks. 
and started making a lot of money and it just started to expand. And of course it caught the attention of uh, the FDA and ultimately uh, people started reporting health problems. And all that. Anyway, this doctor's in prison, maybe to this day, I'm not sure, but got a pretty lengthy prison sentence. And um, it all started, you know, with exaggeration. So yes, I get it, the urgency, expectancy, but always understand there's risks involved uh, when we do that and it can grow and it can get out of control. That's the main, I guess, the little caveat that I would add to that. Absolutely agree. And that's where accountability takes place. I mean, as long as you take responsibility for your actions and you know that you're doing something wrong, but you're ready to take responsibility and to take the risk, you know, I, I think people make the decisions, make their decisions, and then they just have to live with them. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, if anyone needs coaching, I have one opening in the next 24 hours. Call me. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I don't know if I wanted to ask you any other questions. Um, I do have like some, I do like to uh, have deep conversations on like philosophical topics like... Um, um, like how the world is chaotic and how uh, we always have different destinies and then our choices, whatever decision we make can shift our whole life from one direction to a completely different one. Do you like discussing things like that or going through? Sure. We'll discuss okay. anything. <laughs> okay so how do you feel about like um like for, I, I will say about my life for example there are certain things that happen in my life and I'm a kind of a person that I let things happen just to see how it plays out and um because I think I'm very curious about things like to, to look at the bigger picture of things um and I, even though I do understand that we have limited time and there's a lot of like, um, um, let's say a lot of many people who keep on saying like, you need to be precise in your life. You need to make choices. You need to be specific. Um, and it just like kind of pushes you towards having one direction in your life like choose your goal choose your life and just walk in this one direction whereas for me it's like I let life just flow through me whatever happens is like okay hello oh welcome where did you come from <laughs> you know just let it flow and it could go like so many different directions and it's so much fun risky but fun and interesting what's your take on that and I think people have different personality traits. I I have a thrill seeker side. That's why, you know, I went far in martial arts. I'm artistic. I play guitar, and that's important to me, piano, primarily guitar. Um, I think some of that is when I was talking about earlier understanding the personality traits, I had someone that, listen, I don't mean to use a negative connotation, but I think you would call a hippie. You know, I had this person who would go on a sabbatical and go out in the middle of nowhere and, and you know, take a three week vacation and loved it. And I was so envious. Like, I love that. You know, I wasn't judging them. I love the fact that they could take three weeks and go out in the jungle or wherever. So I think, you know, a lot of it is based on personality. I, I never like to see people engage in something that's going to end their life or, you know, harm them seriously. But I think that, you know, you have these personalities who want to explore. I've also talked to people who absolutely would never leave the country, you know, and I think we have to grow to respect that. Uh, the people that, who travel and do these things like international travel, which I've got to do some, it's the coolest experience, but you can't really translate that. If I'm talking to someone and I go, you need to go to Europe, you need to try, and they don't want to do it, then that's their prerogative. So I just think there has to be a baseline of respect. We're seeing that in the political arena. We're seeing that in, in racial situations all throughout our country. And uh, I think if people would come back to a baseline of respect, 
and understand we're going to be different. Uh, the world would be a much better place, but I, I think that's a pipe dream at this point. Yes, I totally understand that people are different. And even though I do believe that people are different, but at the same time, I really do believe that we're all one and the same. Like in our core, we're very, very similar. And it's just because of the uh, life experiences that we had, it kind of like formulated us or formed us into the person or the personality shape that we are in. So, like, I don't know how to explain this, but it's like when I speak to someone, even someone who's like absolutely the opposite of me, like how I am, I would still find things that are absolutely the same, like in their core, like maybe core values or like in their very core of their personality. That's very the same thing is what I have, like feelings or emotions or those things. So at some point we are all the same, but somehow we grow different. And that's a wonderful point. I I, t I mentioned culture diversity and inclusion. I only call it culture diversity because that's the name that everyone knows, but I call it cultural harmony. And I do a little, just a little routine to show just how alike we really are. And um, if someone is abusing a child in front of us, we're all going to be horrified. Now, some people will spring into action. Some people may not. It's a difference in personality. But you're right. In our core values, almost all people are the same. And uh, we just have different personality types. And that's okay. Different belief systems and different upbringings and culture. Uh, I've been honored and privileged to be exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different backgrounds, because, you know, I was over a national training academy. My employees were different races, different cultures, and I learned so much. But, and I went into it. I'm always inquisitive. And I have found people are more than willing to discuss their cultural beliefs and backgrounds if you're respectful. I call it P2P, permission to pry. And I actually teach that, that we ask, may I ask you some questions? And I've never really had anyone get offended by that. And without understanding, uh, we can't have unity. We can't have good collaboration. So I think that's a great point that you made. We are all human beings. Uh, it's just our, our background, our journeys have been different, but we can still work for a common goal uh, to better mankind. So again, there's another unicorn, but uh, I hope that more and more people can kind of come back together. Right, right. Hey, um, what is your favorite movie? Oh, this is this is going to make me so simple. But keep in mind, I was a martial artist. I love the underdog. It's Rocky. It's okay. Sylvester Stallone. Rocky. Okay. Uh, Jaws is in the top probably five though at the time it came out. I, I told you my creative side, I love things that are groundbreaking, like CGI and technology. Like, I love those kind of things. So, you know, some of the ways I look at films is, is it groundbreaking? Is it something that hadn't been done? And that's why, you know, Rocky, the story of the underdog, and then Jaws was the breakthrough, this huge mechanical shark that uh, seemed so real at the time. I love, this is, again, going to make me look simple. I love Iron Man because I, I love the idea of someone building you know, this this thing that they can fight crime and or evil in. And uh it's it's deals with uh if you watch behind the scenes, the CGI on that was a, a little bit groundbreaking uh when some of the things that Tony Stark was doing uh in the uh, Iron Man suit was groundbreaking. But also uh, as you can imagine I like like on Netflix um I loved Breaking Bad, I loved Bloodline, the mystery of it. If you haven't seen that, first season is phenomenal. And then I always have a guilty pleasure, something that is just off the beaten path, you know, like Arrested Development or something, because I get a lot on my mind. Sometimes I like to watch something or read something that's just funny, just fun. You know, don't have to think, you just enjoy it. 
I like comedies too. I like stand up comedy. I like anything that makes me laugh because I think life is so full, so many different things. And I think like we need, there's not enough laughter in our lives. I think if I could laugh 24 hours, I would. I totally agree. And especially when I was federal law enforcement and, and academy director, like there was a lot of intense situations. So yeah, I loved and and I too love stand up. Um, I follow a lot of comedians and enjoy and even on Instagram, you know, just it'll pop up and make me laugh. I like funny memes. I've always had a sense of humor, maybe to a fault. I can be a little sarcastic, give people a hard time sometimes. Actually, talking about sarcasm, I've heard I used to be more sarcastic than I am today. And I kind of like caught myself on um, like being sarcastic. Sometimes it's funny for me, but it's not always funny for other people around me, if that makes sense. So that's why I kind of like if, if I'm being sarcastic, I kind of like catch myself and stop myself because I don't know how would it affect the people around me so i'm not sure like I, at the same time like i love sarcasm and when people are sarcastic like and and i'm like they're like they're making a joke like about something that i did or i i have a very like um uh, accepting of like criticism or whatever it is so i would laugh at myself too but most i mean not everybody does so what do you think about sarcasm yeah no i think you're right on i my sarcasm usually goes to my inner circle, but I can be very sarcastic. But I, I one time I hurt someone's feelings and they let me know that this was years ago and I, and I deserved it. You know, I, I was too sarcastic. They didn't see the humor. But I've got one friend. If we weren't being sarcastic with each other, we wouldn't even feel like friends. It's just I always say this about personalities. We haven't mentioned this, but different people will bring out a different aspect of your personality. Like right now, Ian, you and I are on, we're doing a podcast. So of course we're going to be a very intentional, but we're also going to be a little guarded and we're going to, we don't know each other. So it's going to bring a different part of our personality. But if you and I were good friends, you know, we might say something more funny as we got to know each other's personality. I have this one friend, I'm, I kid you not, he brings out nothing but humor nothing but sarcasm. He makes me laugh. We make each other laugh. We, we do self-deprivating type stories or we give each other a hard time. So, um, you know, different people will bring out a different aspect of your personality. But if I go have dinner, I, I have breakfast or lunch with this former Vietnam pilot. He was a fighter pilot. And we talk leadership. He talks God and faith. And I, he brings out a different part of my personality. I'm not going to be sarcastic with him. You know what I mean? I'm like, yes, sir. So I find that very interesting. And it's not talked about a lot. But we have different personality traits that different people pull out of us. See, this is where it gets me really confused when we say things like, uh, there are different person people are different personalities. There are different personality or traits or characters, and people are different because of that. And at the same time, we're like the same person can have different personality depending on the room. Like me personally, if I'm in one room, I can be this person. If I'm in a different room, I can be a completely different person. And like people will go out and say she's this way and people will go out and say she's this way. And they'll both be right because I can be either one of those personalities. And I think most people are. Yeah, I uh, I think you'll appreciate this, but I, I teach this in my communication that we can lead a conversation. Um, if I texted you, let's say we we're going to have lunch. And we're friends. I say, hey, Ann, you want to go to lunch? You might respond, sure. What are you thinking? I might say, I don't know. How about this restaurant? And let's say you ate there last night. So you might respond back. And then you might say, what time? And I say, I'm thinking 12 o'clock. Well, maybe you've got an appointment. You can do 1230. So my point is, is we can go back and forth with 20 text messages just to schedule lunch. So one of the things I help leaders do and it's only to save time i tell them if you want to text 20 30 times to have lunch hey have fun do it but i teach them if you lead with specifics if i said hey Ann, let's meet at john's seafood 
at 12 today for lunch. Are you interested? Chances are you're going to take my lead and say yes, or you might say yes, but I can't be there until 1230. And I'll say, okay, I'll meet you at 1230. So we've texted three times where it could have been, you know, 20 times. So yes, we can lead. And you're not, I want to clarify so we're not contradicting ourselves. When I was talking about imitating, we all imitate people. I'm talking about not departing from your core values. There's a difference. But uh, when we go into a room and you got someone funny, it's natural. They're going to help you bring out your funny side. If you got someone more serious, you're naturally going to be more serious. And that's okay. We are uh, complex human beings, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I always say this in my inner circle, and I always have people like someone that's smarter than me, um, someone who's more of a, a mentor, maybe a generational mentor, a little older than me, someone that is wisdom, you know, they give me wisdom. I always have someone who's a dreamer. I mean, they've got big ideas that they bring in the room. I also have someone that's funny. And I have someone that will hold me accountable. If you can get those five people in your life, you can grow as, as a human being. Um, I love to be around dreamers. And sometimes I'm a little more practical because I want to start asking questions. Like, this happens to me. I have a friend who's a dreamer. So they call me and they go, you need to be speaking in every university in the United States. You need to da da da. Why don't you go to this place and speak? Why don't you? I said, well, there's a process to get into the university. You know, I don't just get out of bed in the morning and my phone's ringing from every university, but they don't even want to hear that. They're just, you got to get out there. You got to be in every campus in America. So I do love that. Um, those people challenge you and, and it prompts you to think, okay, I need to get on more university campuses. How am I going to put that together? That's very interesting um, about like people having different, like having different people, like the five personalities. If you have those people in your life that you can grow much faster. I've always said that you need a support system. This is part of like my message since like forever is like, um, everyone needs a support system. And without that support system, we really can't. It's like walking on nor here nor there. It's like you don't have like a base or ground to walk on when you don't have that support. And sometimes people don't even realize that they have that support. They would go through life without even realizing it could be their parents. It could be their um their life partner or could be their business partner or a friend that's always been there for them. So it could be anything, absolutely anything. But without that support system, it's really, really hard to thrive. I mean, you could have goals, you could be ambitious, but life is really hard and really tough. And without having that, I don't know what to call it, like emotional bond. Yeah. I think it is kind of like an emotional bond because everything comes or like stems from emotions that's like the first thing that happens is we experience emotions and then whether we realize them or not that's gonna be um uh, that's gonna be the outcome of whatever behavior we choose to have you know this will not apply to a lot of people but one of the most difficult things that i see ceos and leaders deal with is they become ostracized. You're no longer, I remember the first time I got promoted and I, I, you know, I was the head of training for a system with about almost 8,000 people. I had a staff and I remember the first time I walked into the break room and it went silent. I used to be, I used to be one of the, as they used to say, one of the guys. Uh, I would walk in and I could joke around with everyone and all that. But all of a sudden, when I got promoted, it went silent. And leadership really is a lonely place. And that's why you got to have your emotional support outside of the workplace. Uh, I know there's friendships that develop at work. But when you get promoted, you, you can't be someone's BFF anymore. And that was a very difficult adjustment for me. Because when I was an instructor, I'm teaching these people every, every day and overnight. I get announced I'm their boss. 
And uh, it, it was a challenge for me. And I had to really learn some valuable lessons, but also rely on my support group outside of work. And of course, when you move, and I'd move to a new state, a lot of times you keep your old support system, but it's more difficult because it's over the phone or, you know, FaceTime. And, uh, but I can't say enough about a support system. I really can't. And in my book, I went through some tragedies that's outlined in 2016. If you said to me in 2016, I see a dark, I'm in a dark cave in 2016. That's how many events that happened. And I didn't have really the proper support system, I think, that I needed. And I relied back on family, my dear sister that I love so much. And uh, it helped me get through it. But it was a it was a difficult time. I have very um, paradoxic, maybe, opinion about having difficult times in life. A part of me says that we can learn and grow without going through so much misery like there's so much sadness and so much negativity sometimes problems those like dark phases in our lives that i part of me believes that we could grow without them without going through those you know dark uh, stages of life and the other part of me says like, but no, if you didn't go, then you wouldn't have learned and you wouldn't have felt it because you had to go through those feelings, through those emotions in order to actually feel those emotions, right? And realize them and actually get through them to the point where you uh, grew out of it and learned the lesson. Yeah. Yeah, we have the benefit of hindsight when we come out of it. Um, when I was talking about thinking 2016, and when I was in it, it was, it was darkness. Um, my daughter was nearly killed in an automobile accident, was trapped in a car. I'm talking about really major things that happened. Um, I think you're right. Anytime we're in crisis, turmoil, these kind of things, we grow from it. Sometimes it's really so extreme that we need a support system is what I was saying. I needed you know, I'm Mr. Independent. I was go, go, go. I'm dealing with all the stuff in my mind, but I'm still running an academy. I'm still doing all these things. And I burned out. I, I really burned out. And I wasn't taking or accepting the help that I needed. And you're right. I did learn from that. And now I will rely on the support system. I will reach out. I will talk. And at that time, I honestly believed I, I you know i'm an optimist like tomorrow will be better tomorrow will be better i'll get through this and i realized it wasn't getting better i wasn't sleeping and i had all these and some of it i you know i can't talk about but i had a very extreme personnel issue and it was very serious stuff and i needed a support group so that's really what i'm saying yes i learned from it but if someone's listening and you're going through a tough time it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, you know, people you trust to reach out. And I didn't do that early enough in 2016, and I paid a price for it. I think that's a very important point as well, to be able to ask for help and reach out. I think most people... Um, it's not, help is not only when you're like in a big problem or something really emotional is happening. So now you need to seek help. Don't wait till last minute. Don't wait till it gets there, till you're in a very dark place in your mind, because the worse it gets, the harder it is to get out of it mentally. I mean, um, and I think for most people, it's really hard to ask for help because most people, like I hear a lot from people saying like, oh, I can do this on my own. Like I can do, I do this by myself. I don't need help. Like I can do it. And, and it's like, I don't know if it's pride or what it is, but what do you think? Um, I think it's combination. I think it's um, pride, ego. Also, I was an optimist. Again, I kept thinking things will get better. You know, so again, we have a complex personalities in the way we process information. But, um, you know, I was 
in a position where I'm the one helping other people and I'm the one giving guidance and trying to be there for my staff, my family. And I'd never really taken that role of uh, needing to be supported and needed to be nurtured and, and loved for that period of time. And, um, my my sister really became a rock for me. I did go to therapy, but it, it was not effective for me. And I, I'm not criticizing that. It's just, I think it was more the, the personality of the person. I, I felt like the therapist wanted to impress me more than help me, if that makes sense. So sometimes it's just not the right fix. Um, and I had a crazy ironic thing happen. I'm sitting on the therapist's couch. It's serene. I'm thinking this is really going to help. And one of my employees' um, spouse walked in and recognized me. And then I felt embarrassment, which I shouldn't have. But then I felt like I needed to explain myself. It's the first time I'd ever seen a therapist. And here I run into one of my employees' spouse. And it was a pride thing. Like, I thought, oh, my God, she's going to think I'm crazy. She's going to think all these things. And, uh, and you're shaking your head now, but I'm telling you the truth. That's how I felt. And it just... I don't know. I think that started it off kind of bad, and then I didn't enjoy the therapist. So for me, people in my inner circle were more helpful. That's all I'm saying than than the therapist was. And that's how it usually is. Um, I mean, I've tried therapists too, but it's just I think it's a personality thing too. Uh, and to find the right fit for you. But I do really believe in a support system. It really, really helps. I want to thank you so much, Ron, for today's podcast. It was really awesome. And I really want to go like deeper in because I do have like a lot of questions in my head right now after all that we talked to because it's all great. And I think people can learn a lot from it. So I really hope that we could do this again sometime soon and go a little bit deeper into those um, those topics and discuss a little bit more. But thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Ron. And thank you. Yeah, anytime. And this was very interesting. <laughs>